Do you want to see the giant massive objects in space that are just up there, really in our next door bit of the galaxy that you totally miss because they're quite dim? These lurkers are 10, 20 times bigger than the moon, but their photons are easily washed out by light pollution. So to bag them, I've come to an island 350 miles off the coast of Africa and climbed this 2,000 meter high volcano to be in one of the darkest spots on the planet. With this diddy little telescope, I'm gonna show you how truly massive they are. The giant floaters hang out amongst the brightest stars in our night sky. The Sirius, the brightest of them all, got Betelgeuse, Rigel, and that one there is, I've forgotten. Anyway, the reason that six of the brightest stars of the night sky are all in this area is because this, this is our neighborhood of our galaxy. This is the Orion Spur. If you could fly away from the Earth, away from our sun, and look back down upon our galaxy, you notice that the sun was part of a mini spiral arm. That's the Orion Spur. It's the galactic equivalent of our street, and it's where these giant floaters live. I mean, you know who your neighbors are on your street. It's time to find out who your local galactic neighbors are. It's something surely you'd need to know. If you've got dark skies near you, and you can check out this website to find out if you have, then you can attempt this shot too. And happily, the equipment doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Of course, you're gonna need a camera. This is the Sony Alpha 7S. It's, I don't know, 12 years old. And you'll need some kind of motorized mount. I mean, the mount we're using is, is really modest. But I wanted to try and prove a point that when you're shooting wide field, you really don't need to spend the money. The mount's job is to keep the telescope still while the Earth spins beneath it. To get it to do that, all I do is get it pointing at the North Star. Then you turn it on and it rotates in the opposite direction to what the Earth does. For the optics, I was tempted to go wide with a 50 millimeter lens. If you have any camera lens at all in your arsenal, you can do the same thing. In the end, I went for a super sharp telescope, which on the face of it is too zoomed in to bag these giants. Luckily though, it's super flat field allows me to pull off a super neat trick. So I want to use this flat field to get a mosaic over this part of the sky. A four panel mosaic should give us a wide enough field of view like this. Good luck, everybody. With the intervalometer set to one minute exposures, the little red cat begins bagging the big floaters. This truly is exceptional. The sky looks bright. There's no moon, it's just starlight, Milky Way light, zodiacal lights, light. <laughs> This must be one of the all-time great spots. But then when I get out Betty, a scope we're building to be as sharp as a professional observatory, the astro gods couldn't resist sending in the clouds. Guys, it's gone cloudy. So I'm gonna go back down the mountain. Uh, we've got 40 minutes worth. Basically, I got one of the panels and then the clouds came. It's be interesting to see what 40 minutes buys you up here. Turns out it's so dark, 40 minutes bought us something truly astonishing. This is ungraded. Here it is graded. Look, we've got a giant floater, the bogeyman. There's another one up there as well. Really, this is quite astonishing. I cannot wait to get the other panels. Next morning, Ay 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 ay! Look at this terrible, terrible weather. But look what happens when I climb the volcano. I was like, oh, I might try it. Come up here, and there it is. I mean, look at that. Another day, another dollar, folks. It's absolutely the clearest it's been. So far, we've just got one panel. It's about this much bigger than the moon and we're gonna need at least three more to bag these giant floaters. Let's do it. 
This is without doubt the darkest place I have ever been. Over the next four hours, I get more than 240 shots. That's three and a bit panels, but not everything is perfect. My mount is the weak link. Mount wobble is gonna ruin about 10% of the shots. <sighs> and some of the shots are affected by dust from the Sahara, which turned them a bit red. Even so, the location was so stupendous, I am expecting great things. It takes my big computer back at Biscuit Mansions a whopping 12 hours to process all 300 or so subs. All right, Bunny, here we go. Ooh, looky here. Wow. This is one of the deepest shots I've seen of our galactic neighborhood. It's cool, isn't it? Wow, Rorus. We got all the usual floater suspects in there. But what I never realized is how most of them are joined together as part of some giant, twisting, tentacle-ridden, uber-mega-floater. It's an amazing three-dimensional view looking deep into our spur. The picture also holds a big surprise. Believe it or not, the professional nerds aren't sure if Berner's Loop is just behind the Bogeyman Nebula, 500 light years away, or behind uh, the Horsehead at 1,400 light years away. Now, it seems obvious from a picture like this that it's just behind the Bogeyman Nebula. So this is very exciting. Us amateurs can do things that help the professional nerds out. Not bad for a thousand quid setup. And when I looked at the distances of the other floaters, I discovered something truly disturbing. There is a bit of controversy, Berniekins, because according to NASA, M78 is further away than the horse head and flame. I mean, it looks very obvious to me that M78 is in front, but NASA says it's the other way around. <laughs> So should we trust what I see in this picture or NASA? Ooh. Honestly, I'm not Ooh. sure. Could it be our feeble brain is seeing some kind of illusion? It wouldn't be the first time. Look, here's the moon illusion. Both moons are actually the same size. If the brain struggles to process the moon, how's it going to cope with objects that are trillions of times bigger? and light years more distant. No, oh, no, Ooh. not again. Maybe <gasps> everything we see is an illusion. Ugh, Maybe. Kids, don't think just, about the universe Maybe. too hard. We just see what we need to see to survive. As it can induce brain melt. Dimensions themselves are emergent phenomena. So first we get the theoretical rambling. Oh, I was right back in 1966. Then when he said, look, loss of physical control. The quantum mechanics prove longer galaxy. There's no coming back from Is stage it three. Is I it better really step up? in. I don't understand. Rory, you've done some floaters in your time. Are these as big as them? Uh, these are way bigger than my floaters, Benny. Way bigger. Panic over. Way bigger. To show you exactly how big these floaters are, Bunny's done a print run. This is the smallest size, A3. I've actually gone for A2 size. And the reason is, because if I stand here, I see the block of flats where Orion rises, and I just skirt to the left and I see my picture. And from here, three meters away, it is exactly to scale. If I was Superman and I could see the Orion Spur through all London's light pollution, that is the size that it would be, which I think is awesome. FYI, you need to stand four and a half meters away from the A1 size print to get the window into the universe effect, and just two meters away from the small A3 size print. One thing I forgot to mention is that it doesn't matter what size you buy, right? There's only a hundred of them in total. These will probably go quite quickly, folks. I do have another print on sale at the moment, which is this horse head. And the horse head is in there. It's the centerpiece of this one as well. Anyway, good luck. Now, what is surprising is that such a modest setup seems to tell us things about the universe that we didn't know. I mean, that is bonkers. I mean, the tripod and the, the it's just it's just a DSLR tripod, right? 
I think you can buy this head for like 40 quid. So anyway, more about this on my website. I will just say that my old AZ GTI mount, which got killed by Storm Barra, eek, it was better than this one. So there is some variation in quality in these mounts. I talk about it more on my website, but maybe there's better options. Huge monumental thanks to his Richtensteininess. Uh, mate, your tunes are absolutely going on to another level. You can subscribe to Rick on Bandcamp, which is like Patreon, but for Bandcamp. Please support him if you can. And let's not forget to thank my incredible patrons. And I am thanking you so much that at the end of the month, I'm gonna get money from patrons, which is gonna keep me and the little biscuits afloat. So thank you. Patrons can message me anytime, get early access to my videos, and products that I'm selling, and prints, and access to special channels on the Discord server. Talking of the Discord server, I have been getting really great feedback from folks new to astrophotography who are learning a massive amount on the Discord server. And it only works if the mods do their job. Thank you mods, it's awesome. And finally, why not watch a bit more of the biscuit? May I recommend binge watching the making of Betty, the sharpest little telescope in the world. Tootle pip.